This bloke has form senior Labor Minister Kim Carr, well, Shadow Minister, Senator Kim Carr, has come under scrutiny today after the controversial Victorian politician likened investigative reporting into China's role in coronavirus to the Nazis. Now, this is a new low, even in the long history of shameful attacks on science by members of this government. It recalls the campaigns directed against science by the far-right politicians in Europe in the 1930s. Campaigns that also shrugged off any need for evidence. Campaigns run by people who assured us that if you keep repeating a slur, however ill-founded, sooner or later people will believe it. Quite rightly, the Prime Minister is calling for the opposition leader to address the Senator's repeated behaviour. Those were very disappointing remarks. Um, he has a bit of form on this too, I note, um, which is also disappointing, but that's a matter for, for Mr Albanese uh, to address and for the Labor Party to address, I, I, I suppose. Um, but uh, look, Australia is a, is a nation of free speech and that means that people say things from time to time and even under the privilege of this place which people can find deeply offensive and I'm, I have no doubt that people have found that deeply offensive and that is for something for Senator Carter to reflect on. Shari Markson, political editor at large for the Daily Telegraph and host of the Sky News program Shari, this is on Sunday night, don't miss it, has written investigative pieces that Carr has attacked. She joins me now from Sydney. Did any of his commentary surprise you, Shari? It absolutely did. I mean, how can he turn a national security issue? And there are serious national security concerns about the stories uh, we've been publishing in The Telegraph, and that is that there are links between the Chinese military and scientists at the CSIRO and at other institutions in Australia. These are national security concerns. And what Kim Carr was attacking is the politicians who've been calling for an oversight body to, to check, to make sure that everything is above board based on our revelations. These politicians are Matt Canavan, Sarah Henderson, Jim Molden. You know, Kim Carr referred to them as, as ma maverick government backbenchers. They're nothing of the sort. These are serious, hardworking, credible politicians backed by people like Peter Jennings and Clive Hamilton who say there are national security issues here when you have the People's Liberation Army, the Chinese military, literally involved in the scientific research that's happening in Australia. And yet, as well, we've just seen in, uh, in Senator Kim Carr's comments, he somehow twisted it so that China is the underdog here. He was comparing China to the victims of, of Nazi Germany and of Nazi Europe. I mean, that is just so offensive, as the Prime Minister said. It is so ludicrous. Interestingly, two of his Victorian colleagues, I mean, he's a senator for Victoria, he's from the hard left, but you've got uh, Kimberly Kitching, who's also asking questions about China and some of these uh, programs in university, and also Anthony Byrne, who joins me a bit later in the show. He's also uh, from Labor in Victoria, and he's asking serious national security uh, questions about China. This is rogue behaviour from a, from a rogue senator. I don't think this is genuine uh, Labor Party policy or, or a Labor Party intent, but this isn't the first time that Kim Carr has used the Nazi card. It's not, but I was disappointed that Anthony Albanese, when he was asked about this at a press conference today, he didn't shoot it down. He moved past it and then had a go at government backbenchers. And you know what? You make a good point about Labor politicians uh, supporting oversight of, of some of these activities that are happening uh, with Chinese uh, military institutions and Australian research collaborations, because Joel Fitzgibbon was one of the Labor MPs who said that this should be reviewed. And just to go to the heart of how serious this is, our front page of the Daily Telegraph on Monday's paper revealed that the People's Liberation Army, that one of their laboratories, a Chinese military laboratory, had actually conducted the genetic sequencing and virus isolation that underpinned a study that went into the origins of the coronavirus and how it could have been transmitted from animals to humans that's been published in one of the most esteemed medical journals in the world called Nature. No one knows this. It wasn't properly disclosed. The name of the laboratory was disclosed, but not the fact that it was a PLA lab. You know, this is, this is really serious and could potentially compromise the research. 
And look, we'll get to it at the end of the show, but there's a lot of hacking concerns from scientists around the world. We've had the conversation about CSIRO labs here in Australia. We know that's happening in the United States as well, at risk of being hacked and certainly concerned about hacks from China over the virus and vaccination uh, work in particular they're doing. Uh, there's been a whole lot of uh, push from inside the coalition and certainly some from Labor as well publicly, coalition privately, that the government should pull back uh, from pushing so hard on an independent inquiry. That's the push of business as well. Where do you see this sitting now? Look, I think the government has been absolutely right to lead the way internationally on calling for an independent inquiry. I mean, when you, when you think about it, not only has... Um, China's cover-up over the coronavirus cost hundreds of thousands of lives around the world, but it's decimated economies, and we had those devastating jobless figures just in Australia today. That is happening right around the world. All of that could be lessened, and that's just a matter of fact, had Chinese authorities acted differently, had they chosen not to destroy evidence of the coronavirus early on. And, you know, we've been writing about this extensively. It's, it's, it's all there. It's all factually there. So Australia is absolutely right to push for an inquiry. And it's been so disappointing to see, um, you know, and I'm not going to name them all here. We know who they are, uh, Chinese mouthpieces in the Australian media and politicians and, you know, commentators saying that, you know, the government's gone too far. What I'm concerned about is that the inquiry may not get up when it gets to the World Health Assembly.